we had you on last year, your, you, you were on the show last year, and your future was in flux, and it was yeah. unclear what was going to happen. Very high draft pick, what was going to happen with your contract, everything. You show up on the Bucks, and you didn't look great, to be honest, early in the season. And meantime, Ronald yeah. Jones did look good. But as the games got important, when you entered the playoffs, we saw <clears throat> what has come to be known as playoff Lenny. 5.4 yards per carry getting it done. And usually people look at quarterbacks and talk about and talk about playoff Lenny. Usually people look at quarterbacks and talk about clutch. And not so much running backs, but to me, you were clutch. You had your biggest performances consistently when your team needed it most. Why? Uh I mean, it sums up to God, man. Uh it was my time. I flourish and I prosper. You know, PA, Coach B, kept saying, man, we're going to need you for the playoffs. You know, to right. And that's what I did. It was kind of hard for me at first, you know, because you come from being, uh, coming from a team of being a star player and pretty much the vocal, the vocal point of the team. So it was difficult for me. It was a challenge to put, kind of put my pride to the side and understand that I don't have to do everything on my own. We have, we have a great quarterback, great receivers, tight ends, uh, great line, uh, a lot of great players on my team to help me. And uh, that's what I did. Leonard, got to ask you this. I, I do need to get into the text messages from Tom Brady and, and your family with the transition, but also your future here. You are a free agent. I, is your hope to stay with Tampa Bay? Uh, well, we'll see. Right now, I'm just enjoying uh, the process right now uh, with this W, uh, with this organization and my team. And, uh, you know, you never know what the future, the future holds for me right now, you know. Uh, I wound up ending on a great, a great note, and I love to be back. You know, we just have to talk to my agent and see, and see what they're talking about. Well, you're 26 years old. Mm -hmm. You ain't going nowhere. Somebody going, somebody going to grab you. Ain't no question about that. But, I, but I will ask you this question: You spent the last, uh, the, pre, the three previous years of your career in Jacksonville before landing in Tampa for this particular season. And even though you went to an AFC Championship game. In Jacksonville, the reality of the situation is that when we look at you right now in Tampa as a Super Bowl champion, could you crystallize for us and educate folks out there, what's the difference between a championship team like the one you're on now and a whole bunch of other NFL teams that are trying to be one? If there's an element there, can you tell us what that is? Uh, I, think, I think it starts with the head coach and it starts with the organization. You know, you want to you wanna, you wanna play for an organization that loves you. Uh, I can say it. Tampa Bay truly, uh, truly treated me like they love me. When, when I first got here, it's been nothing but love. And the coaches, uh, the players, and everyone that's around it in this Buck organization, it felt like home. So why not give you all? You know, you're playing with a guy like Tom or a guy like Gronk and a lot of other star players on the team. And uh, it was comfortable for me as a whole, especially from my situation where I came from. Leonard, a lot of times it's really hard to keep a Super Bowl champion together um, you have a very important linebacker who's a free agent seems to me that it'd be hard to imagine the team without him you have an important receiver same sort of thing they can use a franchise tag and you have you but it seems like the bucks have uh, uh, the cap space and the wherewithal to keep this team together what's your pitch for them to keep you, why should they keep this group together? It's very rare in the NFL, even with Super Bowl champions. Uh, I'm not going to say I have a pitch, but uh, Coach B.A. made it loud and clear yesterday. You know, he's going to keep everyone. He's going to try their best to keep everyone. So we'll wait and see. I'll let my agent figure that out. You know, that's not up to me right now. Uh, I'm just enjoying the process right now. And, you know, I'm a world champ. <laughs> that's the that's that's the biggest that's the ultimate prize goal of playing football and I'm just I'm just enjoying every bit of that right now good as you should and obviously Leonard you said this it's a total team effort so two things I want you to speak to just that transition going from the Jags to Tampa and how your family helped you support through that and then also we heard Tom Brady was sending out text messages each evening encouraging you guys just tell us a little bit about those behind the scenes situations uh, I think prior when I got cut, it, it was tough for me, you know. Uh, I was killing the whole OTAs in camp. You know, I was outperforming every running back we had there. And uh, I just got a call, you know, when I walked through the gate to go to work. Uh, they said the head coach wanted to talk to me, and uh, he just cut me. You know, he didn't give me no reason. You know, uh, I think it, it, it just was time for a new start anyway for me. 
to be honest, after everything that happened there. And uh, it was it was devastating towards my family. You know, it's my first time in my life. You know, I've always been the number one player in everything, freshman, sophomore, uh, senior, player coming out of high school. I've uh, been drafted the uh, number four pick overall. And that just that's just wasn't something I wasn't used to being cut from a game I love to play, and I was so talented at talented that. And uh, just me coming coming from, going from the Jacks to the Bucks, you know, we had guys like Tom who reached out to me, Devin, who wanted me, who made me want want to feel a part of their team and wanted me to come there, you know. And that that's what opened my eyes about this team with those guys. And also, uh, like understand, like a lot of people don't understand Tom Brady, and I don't understand why people say they hate him, you know, when it, when you don't know a guy, and when you finally get to be around him and on the same team and understand his resume and why he has it and all his rituals and what he, and what he does to build his team, build his mm-hmm. players around him and have confidence in him and, and, and the game plan. Uh, it's crazy. You know, um, he, he gave sure. us a speech before the game. It's about honor. You know, I ain't going to go into details about it, but it was deep. You know, uh, I never I never felt that that deep. Uh, my feelings was the word honor until he put it in – uh, a sentence that made everybody open their eyes and realize, you know, realize that we're going to win this game. Leonard, uh, I, 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 before I ask you my next question, I, I'll tell you why people hate Tom Brady. Because they ain't Tom Brady. That's why they hate him. Because <laughs> they, they, they're not him. That's why. <laughs> you understand? They're That's tired true. of him whipping their butt. They're tired. I mean, he got everything. He looks great. Beautiful family. Beautiful organization. <laughs> Six, now seven rings. They're not him. That's what it is. Yeah. It's jealousy and envy. Plain damn simple. Now, yes, sir. before I let you get on out of here, was there ever a point right before the Super Bowl, leading into Super Bowl week, that y'all thought this is it for Tom Brady, that he may decide to walk away if he wins it all? Was that a thought? Was that a discussion amongst the players prior to the game? No, it wasn't. Uh, okay. I think. The way uh, Tom carries himself, he carry carries himself. You don't you don't think about it. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN Plus.